Most people never find the apps that justify buying an expensive Android tablet. So I'm going to be showing you guys 10 apps that will totally change how you feel and how you use the Galaxy Tab S11 Ultra. And I've grouped them into four categories, which are note taking, reading, productivity, and creativity. So there's something for everyone. And starting with note taking, my overall best pick is my script notes. It used to be called Nebo, which is less of a mouthful, but you get a really simple paired back UI but a lot of attention to detail when it comes to functionality. Now, it's also very responsive and it does pretty accurate handwriting conversions as well. The app also handles multimedia very well so you can import pictures and illustrations and there's a built-in cut out tool that lets you remove objects from the background and easily add them to your notes. There's even a digital planner feature with a customizable calendar but unlike Samsung Notes this is not exactly free. It's $11.99 for a lifetime subscription. I think it's worth it if you can make the most out of the app itself and all its features. So Notewise is still one of the best apps on a tablet, period. As a creator, I have been consistently writing down my ideas because they come to me at any time of the day. And that's one of the best things about this app. It syncs across all your devices. So your phone, your laptop, and even your tablet are all there. The interface is very clean. It's not distracting in any way. And you can start writing in seconds with a number of powerful tools. So if you're on the casual side, you know, you use your notes for grocery shopping, quick reminders and all that stuff. Honestly, the Samsung Notes app will do you just fine. It's one of the better native apps on this tablet and it is still very solid. It's super responsive to the S Pen, handwriting to text is pretty accurate and it can create folders to keep everything organized. But if you're doing something very serious, you know, long-term note-taking, like you're in lectures, you're writing reports or working on research, Samsung Notes won't really cut it. If you don't want to spend money, the Amazon Kindle app is obviously free. Like the app is pretty solid. It syncs seamlessly across all your devices. And if you're working in the Amazon ecosystem, it just works and makes sense. The books on the Kindle look crisp and clear and the reading experience is very smooth thanks to the display. The downside is that you're locked into Amazon's format AZW and that shows up in little annoyances because you can't easily load up into different formats without converting it first. But straightforward reading, especially if you buy books from Amazon, it's really clean, it's hassle-free and it's a pretty good experience. I love pairing the Kindle app with another app called Readwise and that is to help me capture quotes or other information for later in my day or in my week. These two apps are a great pair and I think everyone should try it out. And if you're reading this, subscribe to the channel. All right, let's get into the apps that really unlock the capabilities of the Tab S11 Ultra that most owners don't really get into. We have the Zen Flip Clock app. At its core, it's a minimalist flip clock and you can get the classic card flip animations as the time changes, but there's a little more to it than that. If you swipe left, you find a built-in Pomodoro timer for work, you know, 20 minutes when you're working and it gives you five minute breaks. If you swipe right, there's a stopwatch. Now the animations are smooth, the interface is clean, and honestly, just having that that big readable clock staring at you from your desk helps with time awareness in a way that smaller screens won't just give you. There's also a widget you can add to your home screen and it supports standby mode. So if you got your tablet charging on a stand, it automatically activates the flip clock. And speaking of a clock and a timer, Todoist is one of the best apps I've seen when it comes to managing my time. I've tried a million and one apps, but Todoist always comes in at the top. One is that the natural language inputs. Now you can type something like meeting with my friends every Thursday at 2 p.m starting from next week and to do is just figures it out. It translates that straight into your reminder on your calendar and you're done. And it's surprisingly smart with more complex things. Like if I type, wake me up every Tuesday at 5 a.m. until December 10th, it automatically puts a cap on those reminders. So I'm not getting notifications forever. It just knows when to stop. It's honestly so convenient. And you're not hunting through menus or scrolling through different dates to pick your schedule or your time. You're just typing what you need in plain English and the app handles everything. And it's a bonus that apps sync across all your devices seamlessly. So you can pick up where you left up at across any of your devices. It also integrates with Google Calendar so you can see both your schedule events and your tasks in one view, which is honestly how productivity apps should work. So every time I've gotten a tablet because I want it to be more productive, I get bored a few months in and end up just using it to watch YouTube videos. But this time around, I found that the hack is to get apps that allow you mix work with play, like Infinite Painter. Now this one is one of the best apps for digital artists and I'm just enjoying learning a new creative skill with the pressure of performance. You get hundreds of built-in brushes that actually feel realistic, pencils, inks, watercolors, all designed with the full pressure and tilt support. 
The S Pen redesign actually improves the experience better here. Now, the hexagonal design makes it more easier to hold for longer sessions, and the width just allows you to make more precise strokes. So, if you're a sketcher or a painter or someone just wants to just doodle stuff, this is an upside. This has also helped me with thumbnails. I just literally draw my thumbnails and I just see how it'll look like before I start shooting them. And the free version of the app gives you three layers and all of the brushes, and that's enough to get started if you're just testing the water. But you have to pay a one time $10 fee for the Pro version and that unlocks unlimited layers and all the tools. MD Vinyl is completely different. It's not a creation tool per se, it's a music player widget that turns your screen into a vinyl recording player. And it's absolutely immaculate because I listen to a ton, a ton of music. You can connect it to your Spotify and when you play a song, the album art is animated into this vinyl recording player which is kind of dope. Now the tone arm moves onto the record when you play, it lifts off when you pause and it's genuinely satisfying to watch especially on the screen that big. You can customize the background colors, the vinyl colors and there are different widget sizes you can add to your home screen. It's not going to change your life but if you care about aesthetics and you want your tablet to look good when you're sitting there just playing music, this nails it on the head. Creativity has some of my favorite apps on a tablet and Canva is an app that I keep coming back to a lot of the time. Now I see Canva as a replacement for Photoshop, especially if it's intimidating. It simplifies design for the average consumer because it has templates for everything. An Instagram post, a pitch deck template, and millions and millions of more, literally at this point. And if you're a creator of any kind, I highly recommend Canva. Now paired with Canva, I use Adobe Lightroom for all my pictures and my thumbnails. The huge display takes full advantage of this app as the picture quality is great and detailed too. And to be fair, there is no other app that I can use to edit all my pictures if it is not Adobe Lightroom. So those are my 10 apps that I use on a daily basis. Let me know which ones you'll be trying and if you've got any recommendations, let me know down in the comments. I'm always looking for something new. As always, thank you guys for watching this video. My name is KJ and I'll catch you guys in the next one.